if we use ranked choice more people get a voice it's not a case of i lose if you win when we find common ground we can turn this thing around and somehow solve this mess that we are in there are always more than two points of view Hey, welcome to Thinking Green. I'm Rana, and I'm here today with two candidates uh, who are running for the Green Party uh, for State Senate in uh, Wallingford and in Wyndham and a lot of the surrounding towns of both, both of these towns. Uh, David Bedell, who's running in the 34th uh, State Senate District, and Jean Dismay, who's running in uh, the 29th District. So welcome both of you. And I guess in whichever order you want, uh, if both of you have been Green Party members longer than I have been, uh, and you've run for office in the past, but not really as much recently as in past years. So um, what inspired hmm. you to get involved in this particular election? Gene, why don't you go first? <laughs> I, I think that, um, not surprisingly, the Green Party um, needs candidates. <laughs> so there's always a certain amount of pressure to run for that reason. Um, I got interested in this race specifically because um, I've been always very involved in um, electoral politics uh, reform. Uh, making sure there's open elections and fair elections. I'm a member of the Connecticut Citizen Election Audit, and we go and we watch all the recounts. And we've come to the inescapable conclusion that um, we need a different way of doing elections. And one way is to do ranked choice voting. And this is not their policy, but this is one of the clear things that's that's obviously come to a lot of people of <laughs> late. Um, that ranked choice voting is a much more fair way. It lets more people participate in the system and it gets rid of this so-called spoiler effect. The other main change that should happen is happening, is coming to a head right now because I think there's 16 towns that don't have a second registrar running. And even though the Democrats and Republicans both automatically get in, they can't even field a candidate. So we've always, and this is Connecticut Election Audit, would agree with me on this one. We need paid professionals that are regional election monitors and that can help local people who just come that day and do the election because it's impossible for a registrar voter to learn all this stuff and then do it once a year or once every, you know. Um, and it's complicated. It's a, it's a new, they have to go to all these trainings and they get no pay for this. I mean, virtually no. And so it's just not fair and people won't do it anymore. System needs to change. The idea of getting a Democrat and Republican was that, that it should be, that would make it fair because both parties are represented. Well, nowadays, most people are unaffiliated. So we need a representative. So it should be nonpartisan professional staff. Ranked choice voting, I should say a lot more about that, but I'll let David go. And I'll just say our state senator um, was the reason we don't have ranked choice voting or is the reason. And so I thought it was important to run. So you can challenge her on that, differentiate yourself. Yeah, so in, in my case, and oh, and I believe uh, several of those towns where they can't find enough staff for the registrar's office. I think there are several or a few of them are in your district. Uh, actually, they're, they're in a, a mutual friend of ours mm -hmm. who's the election monitor for the area in his district, but not necessarily in mine. I don't okay. know I mean, if there's one in mine in yeah, district. of the eight towns that I represent. Okay. But yeah. yeah, I know a lot of them are in that eastern part of the Absolutely. A lot of small towns out here. Yeah, where I'm running, the towns are bigger, and I think they've managed to find uh, registrars in every case. Right. Uh, but in my case, uh, uh, it's actually the office I'm running for, the state senate district, where uh, one party could not find a candidate. Uh, this is the uh, right. state senate district 34. And since I've lived here, um, they've had a Republican, always a Republican incumbent. It's a mostly Republican district. 
but with a strong democratic presence also. And they fielded a candidate every time. But this year, uh, they had nobody who wanted to do it. And when I read that in the newspaper, uh, I decided, well, uh, that's not much of an election when there's only one choice on the ballot. That's what I call a Soviet style election. Uh, so I said, there ought to be some kind of choice for the voters. Why don't I petition and uh, run as a green candidate? And so mm -hmm. both of you petitioned onto the ballot and mm -hmm. maybe you can just talk a little bit about what that experience was like and what you learned about voter access issue or candidate access issues while doing it. I'm just going to say, agree with David. I think both of us are running on, we need more participation in elections. And that is in giving voters choices. Um, yeah, I was surprised. It was interesting. Um, I, I, it's a lot, it's a lot of signatures. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I haven't had to campaign in the heat of the summer before. <laughs> and, oh my, 90 degree weather. And you can. Um, I was. I'm very fortunate that we have a Willimantic Food Co-op, and I was allowed to sit outside there several days, and that's where I got most of my personal signatures. And I was able to sit. <laughs> and actually, somebody brought me an umbrella. Um, somebody else brought me water. People are very nice, but they're also much more inclined to sign there. Um, and then we had actually we ended up hiring, but we started by volunteering. Um, a gentleman who came, Paul, who came in and just really worked hard going to any door-to-door -door areas we suggested. He went um, in, in the heat of the summer and collected a lot of signatures. And we had festivals and events that we were collecting at as well. But um, it's surprisingly a huge achievement to get that. And I know, David, I, I never thought you were going to pull this off. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I was, I know what you mean about pounding the sidewalks in 90 degree weather. I was out there a lot of times in the hot weather. Um, and uh, what I found was um, the best place was I got permission to set up a table in front of my town post office, which has just foot traffic going in and out. Uh, it's not a parking lot in front like a lot of places. Uh, so I just talked to people on the sidewalk and um, I went to some events also, but none were as easy as uh, in front of the post office because they're, for the most part, they were uh, residents of the district. So they could sign. <laughs> um, and maybe I had it easier because if people were afraid of uh, the, the so-called spoiler effect of a third candidate, I said, well, you know, there, there's only, um, uh, there's no Democrat in the race and, uh, and it's just me against the incumbent. So then they were usually willing to sign. Yeah, uh, I, I, I actually um, didn't have a lot of response against ranked choice. In fact, many people said, of course, we're for ranked choice voting. These are the well-informed Democrats. Right, but then they say, but but we don't have it now. First get ranked and, choice voting, but then you can run. they would say, <laughs> but you're running against May? I said, yes, and she's not for this. And they're like, why isn't she? And I said, why don't you ask her this? <laughs> and they were, I mean, I actually ran into people like in the Boombox Parade who were working on May's campaign. And they almost signed because they were in favor of ranked choice voting. And then they went, oh, um, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm working for May. <laughs> it's like, well, you should get her moving on this because. Uh, oh. I think Gene is frozen, but uh, yes. So, yeah, so but I, I also you know talked about ranked choice voting and that's what we really need. And fortunately, my um, uh, the chair of the uh, Wallingford Democratic Town Committee has uh, spoken in the past in favor of ranked choice voting. Um, and I actually reached out before I really started collecting signatures. I reached out to confirm that uh, there was no they had no Democrat in the race or no prospect for a candidate. Um, and she said, no, it didn't look like they would find anyone. Um, and she even, uh, suggested maybe the Democrats would cross endorse me as a green. Uh, I was skeptical, mm -hmm. but I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to meet with you. And 
So she called together some people from the Democratic town committees in the, the few towns in the district. And, uh, you know, she she was suggesting it and some of the others liked the idea, but uh, a lot, most of them said, no, I don't think it's a good idea to endorse a non-Democrat. <laughs> uh, but I, I just told them, I hope that, um, you know, many of them would sign my petition and I was hoping that some of them would vote for me because uh, it's just a choice between me and the Republican. And yet they thrive on cross endorsements. Well, so receiving the, the working family party. Yeah. yeah. Um, but usually it's the working families party that endorses the Democrat. Right. Um, but that's okay, but not the other way. Right. There's been very few, very few cases. We did have a couple in the past where they endorsed someone who refused to join the Democratic Party, either was green or unaffiliated. Not Greens. I don't think they've endorsed uh, Greens. Bonnie Troy, yeah, gone in West. Did they? I think she was started as a Green, and mm -hmm. then there was no Democrat, so they uh, agreed to cross endorse her. And then it it led to some problems. I, I mentioned this that you know up front. I that you know if you endorse me, I, um, you know I'm not going to attack Democrats, but I will be endorsing other Green candidates, including our Green candidate for governor. Um, and so they, I guess they saw. They don't want to be associated with that. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I mean, Lamont has gotten so many endorsements from so many parties this year. Mm -hmm. It's really disheartening because he seems to me one of the least illustrious governors we've seen in a while. Uh, but uh, I also well, think, David, <clears throat> you know, uh, being only on the green line, you're likely to get a higher percentage of votes yeah. on the green line, which, you know, hopefully in two years, you know, you can look at CEP qualification without having to get signatures. Yeah. So these are the, the nitty gritty facts, which I mean, I think we know about, but uh, other people watching this should understand. In order to keep the ballot line, um, the candidate has to receive one percent of the votes cast, and that's usually not difficult for a, um, you know, a race like Jean's or mine. That's a, a district. Um, it's harder if you're in a statewide race, like for, for um, president or for, for governor. Governor. Um, yeah, I expect we'll get to 1%. And then in my case, with um, only two candidates running, uh, I think there's a very good chance that I'll get over 10%. We've seen that happen in the past, 10 or 15%. I don't think we've reached 20%. Um, but each of those... Um, Watermarks is a um, a step toward getting uh, public funding in the next round of the elections. So um, even if I get ten percent, it means I could be eligible uh, in a for the public funding, just like Democrats and Republicans often apply for. Uh, and I would be out on an well, if I had twenty percent, I'd be on equal footing with them. Uh, you know, mm. we, all have, we all have to raise wow. our own contributions, but then they get we get matching funds. Uh, but usually, if you're not a major party candidate, you have to do a lot more petitioning, more than you than just to get on the ballot. You have to collect lots and lots of signatures just to qualify for public funding. And with 10% of the vote, then they say, "Well, you're you're like." Part, you're you're like some fraction of a major party candidate, so we'll let you get a fraction. Of <laughs> well, yeah. Myrna, people did... don't understand how difficult this so-called um, campaign finance <laughs> that's supposed to be helping everybody run. How difficult it is for anyone except a Democrat or Republican to want to run on or to get any funding. Yeah. yeah. In New London, uh, in in a special election in 2019, Myrna did qualify. Uh, she got 15% of signatures and then got over 20% of the vote. It didn't carry over even to the next election, though, because it doesn't wow. count if it happens in a special election. Oh. <laughs> so she wow. had 28 or 29% of the vote, and it did nothing for nothing. us the next time around. Uh, and you talked about the problems of campaigning in the middle of, of summer, which are considerable. She was getting signatures in January and February. <laughs> which is and also. Ballpoint pens were freezing. Wow. Yeah, I remember when we ran Jonathan Pelto for state rep, remember? And he was just like, he, he, you know, he had a background as a Democrat representative. 
And he, he was just astounded how hard it was to get on the ballot, much less yeah. get any votes and how to campaign and all the stuff that we don't have access to that the yeah. other parties do. Yeah, it's pretty amazing for people when they try to do this. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so right um, choice voting, just because I don't think we actually discussed what it is. Oh, yeah. Does your, do, do. Have you covered this before? Or should we I have it? not. Okay. So just so everybody understands a little bit about it. Um, basically, when you go and you can rank your, your choices. So you if there's four people on the ballot, you rank them one, two, three, four. And if in the first round of balloting, nobody gets 50%, and that's important because we want our candidates who represent us to represent most of the people, right? If nobody gets 50%, then the second count, your second choices start to get it added in. And there's different ways of doing this. And I'm not necessarily in favor of the way that's being proposed. Because <laughs> they, I think what's being proposed is that you immediately drop the lowest vote getting candidate and count their votes second time. Other systems don't do that. Um, and I've been in races with three candidates where three candidates came in almost tied and to drop the lowest candidate who very well may be the highest vote getter on the second round mm -hmm. is not a good idea, in my opinion. But we can argue about that later. All we're looking for is a study of the system and seeing what works. Yeah, but even whichever system you use, it's better than the- It's uh, better. Where than electing somebody who got you know, 30% of the vote. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with no, yeah. No, so, no other support from the other voters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and it lets people do a lot of things we can't do. So, uh, you know, the favorite line of um, you have to vote for me or else so-and-so is going to win is kind of like not an important consideration anymore. Vote for who you want. Wouldn't that be a change that you could vote for who you well, want? So, oh, you, you'll never win. I can't vote for you. What? What is that about, right? <laughs> well, it also it um it seems to change the um the um quality of elections, the um the campaigning approach. Mm. What they found in places where they've implemented this is the candidates do much less mudslinging and bad mouthing their opponents because they're thinking, well, okay, maybe your first choice is not me, but I hope you'll be my second choice. Right. So I don't want to be too too opposed to your viewpoints or your 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 um, favorite candidates' viewpoints, so right. you know, it just ends up with much friendlier, less polarized elections. And so we can say things like, "Mary Mashinsky is great; <laughs> we want to support her," right? And we can say things like, right. "I like a lot of what May stands for. I don't like some of what May stands for, and that's why I'm running." Hopefully, she'll understand that and will remain on friendly terms. But you know, she's been in a tight race for several times and I think that this could be a spoiler and that was a really hard decision locally um but we had to do some data research and if if I'm the spoiler and the Republican wins here um it's okay we'll still have a majority in the Democrat Senate here in Connecticut so it's not going to rat you know radically change any dynamic like that, but that just makes it really hard to do this because um, I don't want to be a spoiler. I well, want I think, the best person to win. Yeah, we've we've been running candidates for so long, and uh, always there there are fears or accusations of the spoiler effect. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, it looks like it's the only way that um, the major parties will come around to supporting right choice voting is. If they see their candidates being spoiled by the uh, right. by third party candidates, they uh, have you know, to I don't see know why that. They, I don't know why the Democrats didn't get behind this back uh, in 2000 when they were all up in arms about Ralph Nader spoiling the election. Oh, uh, right. it's it's happened. But they did then. nothing. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, and then I think Jill Stein got there was suspicion that that she had a spoiler effect in a couple yeah. of states. Uh, that was harder to measure. Um, but, uh, and it's happened to Republicans also, where there was a uh, independent so. or, or a, uh, or a, um, uh, a libertarian or some candidate in the mix. Actually, we see it this year in the governor's race. Um, um, Bob Stefanowski, the Republican candidate for governor, uh, was fighting tooth and nail to keep the independent party candidate out of the race. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. I want your endorsement, so I'm going to take you to court to get it. Hmm. <laughs> yes, preach. We, uh, ranked choice voting could, could make electioneering um, much more civil on, on many fronts, including right. that. But the funny thing with Bob Stefanowski is, I think after the, his primary four years ago, he won that primary with about 28 or 29 percent of the vote. There were a lot of candidates and he had a very a plurality, but nothing near a majority. Uh, uh, and he kind of owes his candidacy to, um, you know, not having ranked choice votings. Mm -hmm. But other Republicans, I think after that primary, were seriously considering uh piloting ranked choice voting within primaries sure right it, so it, we have to prove to them that it benefits them and that's human nature of course i think this is how it ended turning around in maine finally is that enough people came and were spoilers um that the party said oh yeah we don't want to be spoiled and and there's more people running so david you know better than i do probably um or maybe ronnie you do um there's two states, Maine and Alaska, New York. This is um, just a some part of the of local New towns. This yeah, New York City. Um, I believe it's um, San Francisco Hall or Minneapolis. One, okay. one or both of them does. And I believed it was San Francisco, but I don't know if I'm right about that. That was years ago. I heard it, but other yeah. countries. I mean, Australia, right? Uh, right, right. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think. There were places that adopted it and then, um, and then dropped it again. Yeah, um, Burlington, Vermont, maybe did that. Yeah, I think there was some pressure to, um, you know, one of the parties decided that the rules would work better for them if they didn't have ranked choice mm -hmm. voting. You know, maybe the third party candidate was getting too many votes for their tastes. <laughs> they were going to win if you weren't careful. Yeah. Well, the big presidential spoiler, I I think, uh, I don't really believe that Nader or, or Jill Stein did spoil the election. I think they brought voters to the polls who wouldn't have uh, voted otherwise. But I, I think it's likely that Ross Perot was the spoiler yeah. mm -hmm. in 1992. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and although the Republicans never used that terminology, things really tightened up in terms of of uh candidates other than the democrat and the republican being able to participate in debates and forums mm -hmm. that's uh, and we see that problem to this day uh green party candidates libertarian candidates uh being excluded from public forums right. yeah like the league of women voters race recently um which was a try, you know, and, and their logic was, well, we've always done it this way. Mm. And it's well, like, well, that's that's not good yeah, logic. Yeah, and that's not, gee, that's nobody not wants true. to play with us anymore, but we've always done it the same way. Like, mm -hmm. but that's not that's not true at, at the, in the presidential debates when they were run by League of Women Voters. They did include third candidates, and then it was turned over to a uh, a commission that was run by the two major parties, uh -huh. by the two major parties, and they set the rules. Uh, well, yeah, and also locally, local level. League, League of Women Voters has had many, many local debates, and they do not exclude their party candidates. Yeah, but they, they, they sometimes, I guess nowadays they put in rules saying, well, only if you have so much money. Yeah, right. That was but the, of course, the influence of money in politics is a problem, right? Yeah, we'll include <laughs> right. You if, you, if you've raised uh, $100,000 or whatever. I love how clean our politics are being this year, right? Kevin won't accept money. Ken says, I might spend $250. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I, I keep trying to, to get <laughs> candidates to take money. Uh, you know, Mary in, in Hartford only wants, you know, money to cover transportation if she has to Uber to events and doesn't, <laughs> you know, we're recycling signs. Uh, it, it's really... Uh, an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we're going to make a splash with that or not, but I, I, I do hope that Ken's idea of uh, donating money to diaper banks uh, 
takes mm-hmm. hold because mm-hmm. we all do want to get the crap out of politics, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember one year um, uh, I was given a donation out of the blue from a, a it was an endorsing union. It was the, um, I believe the state police and firefighters union mm-hmm. uh, gave me their endorsement and a check for, I forget, a hundred dollars. Um, so I did spend part of it on a newspaper ad, but then the rest of it, I just had to, when the campaign was over. I just donated it to charity. So is that permissible even? I, I, I will start, start by saying I took a, a donation from my union when I, cause I was an electrician and they were like, oh, okay, you're running. A- um, I don't think there's any overriding state Green Party or National Green Party prohibition uh, against it. In New London, we actually don't take union uh, money. Uh, and I have we have returned checks saying, we'd love to have your people holding our signs at the polls, and we'd love to have our names in your ads, but we won't take the check. Or we've, I think in one case we did, maybe Jonathan Pelto had gotten one when he ran for Congress, and we just gave that donation to uh, the Homeless Hospitality Center in New London because it was too hard to return it. But uh, many years we've said, you know, we're sending you back our check. Please donate that amount to some some favorite cause. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they ever follow through on it or not, but I think it's a local decision yeah. uh, it's, whether it's to rule. take money from PACs with compatible values to ours. Right, right. You know, there are, you know, these nonprofit organizations that then run a PAC uh, as part of their mission or on the side. It's usually a separate right. organization, you know, like, um, you know, say, an environmental PAC or a, mm-hmm. um, a you know, socially progressive PAC. Yeah, so that's those. You know, I I was hoping for at least the ear of some of those kind of organizations, but uh, we, I, you know, my campaign got started too late, as I'm sure yours did, David. So, yeah. um, Connecticut League of Conservation Voters already had done their thing. Um, I, I'm not sure they even endorse uh, challengers. Uh, look at their list, and I. Believe they they publish a booklet of candidates and their records. But isn't it? Yeah. And then don't, they may endorse some incumbents who have proven by their record that they fit the criteria. But yeah, I think they weren't coming, endorsing, but they were willing to have you take a survey. They'll give you a score. I think you know, here's here's the uh, you know the best of the of the of the legislators and here's the worst of the legislators. But I couldn't even get in as a score. Or yeah, because opinion. you're not a legislator, you're a candidate. Well, they, they said they would do it. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but I couldn't, I was they, too late. Yeah, um, too late and... Who was the other one the other day? Oh, Connecticut Arts Alliance, right. too late. Yeah, I think I just but missed that that line. I, uh, but I did get uh, some endorsements. Um, Connecticut chapter of the National Organization for Women endorsed me, and Connecticut the Sierra Against Club Texas. did right. And then yes, and the Connecticut Sierra Club. Hmm. Chapter How'd you get me. there? I didn't see. Um, I don't see any well, action about that. I well, and, and also the Connecticut Against Gun Violence. Um, I think all of these sent me an email with a questionnaire. Um, hmm. I know I started looking up. Well, where can I get an endorsement and. I started looking at the union or the, um, yeah, it was the labor organizations, but they were, had already finished their endorsements. Too late for that. Uh, and then these, I believe they all contacted me. You know, it's mm-hmm. possible I requested a questionnaire from them. Yeah. Now the clock is ticking and I thought that I would share the screen and just show people uh, some sample ballots so yeah. uh, people can figure out. I'll start with uh, I'll start with Wallingford, where you are, David, and that's, that's uh, one of like five towns in my district. Yeah. Uh, what now? What towns are in your district? Well, it's uh, Wallingford, North Haven, most of East Haven, and then just smaller parts of Durham and North Brantford. And I think. In in every town, 
uh, Green Party candidates are appropriately on line G. Oh, what do you know? Uh, yeah, it worked out. Uh, for write-ins, it's actually kind of complicated, you know, our, with our gubernatorial yeah, candidates being write-in candidates. Scroll, Some towns are, it's H. Down, why don't you scroll down and, and point out the Green okay. candidates or the write-in area? Okay, let me, I have, I have to, I have so many documents here on my oh, so thing that part. I'm not actually see. oh, here's Wallingford, okay. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that's it, that's it, just scroll down, like, well, wait, go, go up a little, go up a little, so you see okay. the titles, yeah, that's good, that's, well, no, okay, I, I'm not sure what's showing on the screen, but. Okay, I can't, no, I can't people... see Wallingford. Okay, but town. it is Wallingford. You there, can there, there, that's good, so, that's good, right This there. is the Wallingford ballot. Oh, no, and... don't move it, don't move it. Why are oh. you moving it? Okay. <laughs> Stop. There. Can you see <laughs> Wallingford? Perfect. Yeah. Stop yeah, okay. right there. We now, can see everything. Okay. Point out the green candidates. Near the okay. Bottom. The green candidates on line G are Justin Paglino, who's running for Congress in the 3rd Congressional District, David Bedell, who's running for State Senate, um, and the, the only opposition is Paul Ciccarella, Ciccarella. Right. Um, on the Republican and independent line, and Ken Krajewski, who's running statewide for attorney general. And then where would somebody put a write-in vote? Okay, in a write-in vote, and I have a kind of sign, in uh, Wallingford it is line H, and I think in most towns it is line H, but there are a few towns that have petitioning candidates Mm. Uh, and so the write-ins got bumped to J, but the write-in votes for governor and lieutenant governor would be here, 1H, and people need to fill in the bubble. And weirdly, on every ballot I've seen, the write-in square is very tiny. Well, that's to leave more room so you can spell out the name. Not, I mean, the they, they don't even leave enough room no to spell oh, oh, out oh, the name. Oh, I see. The, oh, you the see how is, yeah. small it is? Yeah, but I see. I thought you meant the bubble. It's no, small. the bubble is okay, but there's no, there's yeah, very I, little space for actually writing in. And and I noticed that on a lot of ballots. Yeah. So even write-ins are getting harder. Well, I'm uh, I, I, I hope they would still count it if you write below the, the box. As long as I'm you guessing it would be okay because people are looking at that part. Yeah. The machine mm -hmm. looks at the bubble right. and, and, and puts the ballot aside. And then people uh, at the polling stations are the ones who confirm. And they have to interpret your writing. So yeah. fairly. Um, yeah. So I think what we should address with that is the fact that there are people who register as write-in voters. And that's the ones they have to count. Now the register when right. you go into the polling place, you can ask to see the list. They cannot give it to you, and they don't publicize it anywhere. But you can ask to see the list, and then you see the candidates who are eligible to be right in. And there isn't much room. So what the Green Party is hoping people will do is fill in initials. It's right. you have to be able to tell the intent. So M B Michelle Bicking C M Cass Martineau. Yeah. That would get us in. We actually made an infographic, but we also have 10 big lawn signs. Let me stop sharing and see if I can find uh, the lawn signs we made. You can probably uh, just write the governor's name, can't you? Like when people. Well, if someone just wrote uh, Michelle, I think, so. yeah. I think we, um, I think that would count. Mm -hmm. uh, this. Yeah, but I couldn't write Michelle that small to fit it in the square. <laughs> no, <laughs> so that's why here, it's like, let me try this. I think her middle she's... initial is L, MLB, apparently. Yeah, would yeah. Uh, this is a sign we got. And I was going to suggest people should let somebody know if you've done this because we want to know. We do want to know uh, because we want to know how they got, uh, got, you know, if they got counted. Whether they so got counted. We, so, yeah. Talk Except, to your Green Party candidate when you come out and let us know you did this. So I'm going to we'll ask, be standing in the parking lot, right? I'm going to ask each of you, and I'm not sure when I'll catch up with you, but we want to make videos of candidates around the state demonstrating how on this 
big 32 by 48 in sign, of which I have 10 of how to, you know, how to and why, you know, why you're voting for Michelle and Cass and how to do it. We did this for Frida. She ended up getting 11% of the vote as a write-in for, for mayor. And, you know, we had someone do it in Spanish also. And it's like, I'm voting for Michelle and Cass because, you know, when they say they're making room at the table for everyone, they really mean it. Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, Ned has come up with that, has appropriated that tagline. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. yeah he, he has some <laughs> at commercials saying he's made, his administration is uh, make, you know, making a place, leaving a place at the table or having or a every place rich white person from yeah, something like Southeast, that. Southwestern Connecticut. <laughs> but if we have candidates, you know, filling in the bubble on a little video and then writing an MLB yeah. plus CAM. That's what this. I was going to say. This needs to have them written in here. Well, so yeah. That well, that, can um, where to write it. Well, that's why I have to catch up with the candidates. And we, when yeah. when the signs go out in public, they'll be filled out. But we want to make videos of people filling them out and demonstrating ah, it. Good, good. I have a video, and maybe since this show might be a little short, I might at the end tack the 30 second video of Myrna doing the one in Spanish for Frida's campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't find any of the English ones we did uh, three years ago, but uh, we do have the Spanish one uh, where for 30 seconds, she explains why she's voting for Frida and how you find the space. Uh, and I couldn't put the H or the I here because different towns have it on mm -hmm. different spaces, but, yeah. um, but but that is a plan for this weekend, getting as many candidates around the state to, to fill out these uh, demo. That's a great idea. Yeah. To show people. Yeah. And we have a little infographic that was based on something that Marilyn Moore um, filled out, um, passed around when she ran as a write in candidate. I think it was also 2019. She was in uh, Bridgeport. And Bridgeport, she lost the Democratic primary, and she was actually treated really badly. She had told her followers to uh, write in MM, and then like the final day you could ap apply to be a write-in, another woman whose initials were MM applied to be, like, yeah. I don't remember what yeah, her so name watch out. was. There's going to be another MLB registering at the last right. minute. Yeah, so we'll maybe, see. Maybe you better put the name picking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, and Marilyn kind of had to change her strategy and tell yeah. people to write in Marilyn and not right. Melinda well, or They could find the, another Marilyn, but... They, they won't find, find another, another picking. They can right. find yeah. another Michelle, but can they find another Bicking? That'll be harder. Probably hmm. not. But hopefully MLB plus CAM will, will be clear intent yeah. so and i love the tagline it, it's perfect for ranked choice voting it's it making is. room at the table for all of us yeah. and that's yeah it, it's actually voices. great in so many ways because you look <clears> at the <throat> candidates and they're all businessmen and they really don't seem like they're in touch with working people at all and and i've really gained an appreciation working with michelle and cast this year of how hard it is to run if you're a person with a job. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, or or to serve in office. So, also, you know, these meetings, it's insanity. You know, they they have meetings, they, I don't know what morning. Well, you're not going to go to work the next day. Well, that, that's why most of our legislators, I believe, are either lawyers or real estate agents. Or retired. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to pick up something that Jean said to make sure people are aware that um, if you want to write in a vote, it only gets counted if that candidate had registered with the state beforehand. So if you write in Mickey Mouse or Pogo Possum, they will not count it. Uh, and and I've, I've encouraged people to, oh, you know, if you don't like any of the candidates, write in your own name, but please register first as a candidate. It's a very simple form that you, you can mail in. Yeah, one year uh, there was a reporter uh, in New I'm London sort of who was running that. someone, a fictional person, someone snazzy pants, and he had this whole little campaign. But of course, it wasn't a real person and he couldn't register him. 
it was a really boring mayoral campaign and I was so tempted to vote for whatever Mr. Snazzy Pants, <laughs> but I knew it was for naught. Right, or people put their, their pet in, say your pet's running for election, but uh, yeah. they only, Yeah, they only but on the other hand, I, I'm thinking the people who do the counting, do they know not to count those? Because well, they, they don't the know list. what to do with any of the write-ins. Well, yeah, if they, they, if they them count them, constantly. Them, they've got a list of who, who they can count. Right. But they, they mess it up, as you know, very, very consistently. <clears throat> it's actually a very good idea to do a write-in, especially if you're running for office. But even if you're not, um, <clears throat> your vote can count twice in a lot of towns because they don't know what to do with the write-ins and they send them back through the machine. Mm -hmm. And it messes up the machine totals, but only if somebody is looking, does it get caught. So don't bother doing it in Eastern Connecticut because we look at that stuff. But many towns, <laughs> nobody's looking. And sure enough, all the absent or the the um, writing candidates get sent right back to the same same machine. So your vote counts twice. Yeah, they're still <laughs> despite all the training and the uh, supposedly full. They can't go shames, to all the there's training. There's a lot of room for error. There's a lot of room yeah. for, for human error. Once again, you have people who have jobs. They they're just not going to put in these kind of hours for nothing. I, I you know I don't know how the registrars are paid in in your towns. Um, I, I know New London is different than everything, but in Wyndham it's like say you get eight thousand dollars a year. I, mean, I think they upped it to ten now. But if there's a lot of um, say the tax doesn't pass and they have to run an election after election, that five of these that takes it out of their pay. They only get ten thousand dollars a year, so. They don't want recounts. They don't want. They want to get it passed and have it done as fast as possible because that's the only way they make money. To go to a lot of trainings on top of all this, and can't do it. Just can't do it. Well, David, you have been looking for uh, candidates, you know, unaffiliated and minor party mm -hmm. candidates to run for registrar of voters, and you know, it, it. This just you know makes it clear what the problem is that. Uh, New London is different, but it it's a mess everywhere. Yeah, yeah, David, thank you for finding candidates. It's amazing the kind of work you've yeah. put into. Yeah, you, just, you know, you look through the voter list and uh, uh, keep. I mean, Doug Larry has kept a done an excellent job just keeping a database of contacts so that if we do want to reach a voter, we've got some kind of a maybe an email address to contact them, or maybe a better phone number than what's in the official list. Yeah, but I, I think one time you you just were looking in Union, right? And you're look, oh, you just yeah. found somebody who had a rainbow flag on yeah, their Facebook, Facebook page or something. You said, that's ours. <laughs> <laughs> and then he moved to a different town. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard. Um, I guess um, we're pretty much out of time. I uh, have a couple more minutes. Does each of you... I want to just say a few words how voters could contact you or, oh, yeah. you know, make a, a little bit of a pitch for your own campaign. Yeah. Could, could I share my screen? Uh, yeah, I think it's set that anyone can share. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. so I do make a, uh, a yard sign. Uh, huh. So... Uh, it was also a recycled sign, and I just printed the, the bottom part at uh, my local library. And I did register a website domain, green34.us. And uh, I'm still working on just a, a simple web page, but this will take you, if you put it in now, it'll just take you to this, this Facebook page that uh, is what I'm showing, the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the uh, the sign by the road, green34.us. So I'm asking people to go there and then they'll find okay. uh, all my contact information, phone, email, et cetera. Well done, well done. Yeah, really nice. This is one of the flaws of having old farts like me for office is uh, I don't put up websites and I don't like Facebook. Well, you had, you had people, <laughs> so I'm like uh, not doing good on the social media account at all. At you had all, someone but, in, a, um, in a previous campaign. I remember there was some uh, vote gene Facebook or website. I have a vote gene vote green um, email address. And yeah. I did have, mm, I really don't 
haven't had too much Facebook presence. Maybe um, not when you're running for mayor or um... maybe probably mayor. Probably mayor. Yeah, that was that was more of a unifying. I had a lot more help with that. Um, but anyway, I guess I would say you can contact me, um, J period, vote Jean, vote green at gmail.com is easy. And I know most people don't contact you. So um, I'm filling out the, the voter checklist. What's it called? My vote or something. And I'm going to do the, the other one <laughs> today. Maybe not. Tomorrow, maybe, probably Saturday, maybe it rains. Um, <laughs> but I, I am strong on a lot of the issues, so um, it's not only about ranked choice voting is on because it's you know I'm I'm so active in the environmental stuff. I forget that this is important to other people. Of course, I'm an environmental activist. I have been my whole life. I'm a peace and justice activist. I'm a fair voting person. I have, I am involved in so many campaigns and committees and groups and i was the chair of the energy commission for 12 years in town i started the recycling committee years ago i um sustainable wyndham i'm just like i have all the creds <laughs> and um it's all good green party stuff so yeah and you yeah. have you have the advantage you actually served as um what was it, it first like woman First select woman before they have yeah, a mayor. Yeah, yeah. So actually, that that's going to be in I think the Norwich Bulletin article. They said, you know, what qualifies you? And it's just like, well, my experience as first select woman made me keenly aware of the decisions that the state makes and how they impact local towns. And at that point in time, they were considering cutting um, uh, the pilot pi payment in lieu of taxes to housing properties that were in towns. And so Wyndham has a housing authority and there's some properties that are owned by them and they don't pay any sewer taxes already and they don't pay any other taxes, but they get pilot taxes. And they were gonna cut that. And our Senator who was from Eastern Connecticut in this different town, didn't have any idea of the impact of that. And I was just like, you're not paying for education. You're not paying for police and fire. You know, now you're cutting the little bit that you're giving us. It was like 31% of what they owed. So mm -hmm. this is ridiculous. You're killing our towns. And, you know, the other thing is the state. And I, I used to go to the legislature when I was first selectman. And I'd say, if you would just pay what you owe us, we wouldn't be a poor town. Wow. Right? Because they take half of our property tax, half of our properties, and you call them tax free. And then you give us nothing. And of course we're broke. Why don't you just give us the money that you owe us? Because you're the one who called it tax-free. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be fine and we won't be here groveling. But they love to keep people more on welfare. I'm sounding like a Republican. <laughs> but yeah, Wyndham is like a welfare client to the state. Oh, please, please give us some money. Well, please, please stop stealing our money. Boy, I can really relate to that in New London. It's very yeah. much the same situation Every that we are. And I think all the cities in Connecticut are subsidizing the surrounding suburbs. The sure. hospitals are here. The yeah. government the buildings are here. The you know social service agencies are all here. And all the towns can externalize all those expenses, mm -hmm. lay them on the cities, and then the cities end up groveling. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm happy to be providing services. I think that's a, that I'm proud. Our, we have a very, very generous community. We embrace all the people who come here for help. Bravo, but don't make us <laughs> into your poverty clients. So it's like unfair, yeah. So anyway, yes, I have a lot to say on a lot of topics. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get another chance before election day. Well, thank you, David. And thank you, Jean, for joining me. We'll get this up on YouTube within a couple of days uh, and maybe on public access you know, stations in your own areas as well. All right. so, and I'll try to put it on my uh, Facebook page. Okay. I'll send okay. you the link. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. all of you will have more candidates uh, next week. All right. Thanks, Thanks very well. much, Rana. Right. Thank, thank you. you. If we use ranked choice, more people get a voice. 
it's not a case of I lose if you win. When we find common ground, we can turn this thing around and somehow solve this mess that we are in. There are always more than two points of view. If you listen, you'll find out that it's true. Some of what she said makes sense, and some of what he said does too. Is there some compromise if we cross the T's and dot the I's? And when we put them both